for the uh, questioning to, to the are you you're asking questions? Yes, okay. uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, go ahead. Then, oh, well, just uh, uh, Minister, I'd like you to look into, uh, and I've given you notice of this through uh, through an order paper question, a couple of order paper questions, and uh, a letter that I sent to the uh, to the Premier on October 8th, and I'm going to read that into the record, and uh, he forwarded it to you, uh, uh, asking you to look into it on October 14th, and it concerns a uh, very serious matter, uh, local matter for me, but I suspect it's also occurring across the uh, across the province, and it ties into your remarks in the last page of your. Uh, a speech today when you said Ontarians want and deserve quality health care when and where they need it. I've had uh, three medical laboratories closed in the last four months in my in my riding, which uh, uh, completely without notice, and uh, to me, the community or the local uh, municipalities, and they're in uh, 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 Life Labs in Elmville, uh, Stainer, and um, Gamma Dynacare in Tottenham. Uh, and I just want to read for the record, October 8th, uh, this year, dear Premier, I'm writing to express uh, my concern with the consolidation of medical laboratories in my riding. The closure of three facilities in Tottenham, Stainer, and Elmville is having an adverse effect not only on the people in those communities, but also those serviced by labs in other areas of my riding. With the closure of the Gamma Dynacare Laboratory in Tottenham, my constituents now have to travel to either Bolton or Alliston to receive the same service. Not only do they have to travel further, they also have to endure longer lineups at those facilities because of the consolidation of services at those locations. In Stainer, Life Labs decided to close their local facility and force people in Clearview Township to travel either to Collingwood or Wasaga Beach. Again, a longer drive for medical care and longer lineups for everyone in all of those communities. Next is Elmville, where the Georgian Bay General Hospital, which is the Midland Hospital, as you know, has closed their twice a week service. Elmville residents now have to travel all the way to the Midland, pay for parking at the hospital, and wait hours for care. All of this is obviously completely unacceptable to me and the people who rely on these services and their families. I am a user of these services, uh, Minister. I, I uh, suffer from uh, diabetes and hypertension, which comes with the job, I think. And I know how long the lineups can be. Not only they are not, <clears throat> now they're just only going to get longer. When my parents were alive, and they both died within the last 14 months, I can't imagine how we would have managed had they not had a blood lab in their hometown of Alliston. There was no way in their final months they could have traveled any great distances. But now that's exactly what the people of Tottenham, Clearview, and Elmville must do. What an unnecessary hardship for everyone involved. As Premier of Ontario, you're responsible for providing timely access to medical care for everyone, including small town Ontario. I'm urging you to direct your Minister of Health to immediately put in place a plan to return these services to these communities. I appreciate your prompt attention to this very important matter, and I look forward to your reply. Uh, sincerely, Jim Wilson, and he sent me a letter on October 14th saying he had directed it to you and uh, asked you to reply promptly. I also want to read into the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, a unanimous resolution from the Corporation of the Township of Clearview, in which uh, Stainer is located and was sent to me by Deputy Mayor uh, Alicia Savage. And it says, whereas Life Labs closed their only Clearview location in Stainer on September 27th with limited notice and no notification to the municipality, and whereas this is a vital service which now requires Clearview residents to travel to neighboring municipalities, and whereas the province of Ontario is required to make such services available equally to all residents in Ontario, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Clearview requests Life Labs to immediately reinstate service in Clearview and supports the Deputy Mayor's attempts to facilitate a resolution, and further that Clearview supports MPP Jim Wilson's lobby of the provincial government to provide service equally to all Ontarians. I also have a, an email that says uh, from a lady in Angus, Ontario. I've, I have several dozen emails and, and almost, I guess, 3,000 names on petitions, which I have been introducing almost daily into the legislature. It is, a, you know, maybe a small thing in the scheme of things for the Ministry of Health as a former Minister of Health, though I do realize that uh, we do have to provide services as close to home as possible. And this came as a complete shock, and I should say that I've met with um, Life Labs. Uh, they admit that closing Stainer has put a tremendous pressure on Wasaga Beach and Collingwood. In fact, the lineups are, uh, are an hour to two hours long. I'm, I'm a month late going for my blood work because I haven't got an hour to stand in line. Every time I go by, there's a huge lineup at both locations. Um, again, we had a two-day-a-week clinic in Stainer. So I, I've asked Life Labs to look into it. Um, but they, they, they can't give me, and one of the questions I do have for you is, are there wait time standards for medical laboratories? 
They don't have any electronic way of knowing how long I'm in line. I've also got some photos here of the lineup. I no notice it's in the morning, uh, so they are longer in the morning and people have fasted overnight. But there's 33 people. There's 20 in the waiting room and the rest outside. Uh, they were all crammed in the waiting room. It's a very small location and uh, it's inhumane. So Life Lab said that they would look into it. But again, there's, you know, like a monopoly in the province. There's only three companies, really, that have a third of the business each. And so the other question I have is, in addition to are there wait time standards of any type, um, is there enough competition in the sector? Because, I, I, you know, they're able to, you control the licenses, and I wouldn't mind an explanation, a brief one, about how that works. And I wouldn't mind a briefing from your ministry on how it works so that I can get up to speed on, on the system. But there's Life Lab, Labs, uh, Gamma Dynacare, and uh, CML Healthcare, and it seems to me they've nicely divided the province up, and this may have been going on for, for dozens of years for all I know, uh, and there's no real impetus on them to provide services as close to home as possible, and they seem to be able to willy-nilly close these laboratories uh, without, um, without any notice to any of us. Um, Dear Mr. Wilson, I felt compelled to write and give you our support regarding this matter and offer you my two cents. Dalton McGinney needs a reality check. I wonder if he or any member of his immediate family ever had to leave their home at 6 a.m. or earlier just to line up for blood work. That is the way it is for us and many others now. When do doctors want your blood taken? Usually after at least 12 hour fast. Ever arrived at a lab nice and early, think you're going to be in just a few minutes only to find out that there are 20 people lined up ahead of you even before the doors have opened. What about diabetic patients? I truly feel sadness for the people of Stainer et al losing their labs and having to incur parking expenses at hospitals. My experience has been when you do finally get in, there are maybe three technicians available to help in the Alliston lab. My experience has been when you do finally get in, there are maybe three, let's read that. And to add to that, patients who need more than blood work, ECGs, et cetera, and that technician is tied up for up to 15, 20 minutes with just one person. Call in extra help? Hell no. If you don't want to wait that long, you're told to come back between 11, 10 and 11. Sure, as a diabetic, I can wait 17 or more hours before eating anything so I can take my medication, he says sarcastically. Maybe the best thing would be to treat labs like doctor's office, require patients to book appointments, and I'd really hate to, for this to happen, to have to happen, because then it would be, sorry, all morning appointments have been booked for three weeks, we might be able to fit you in at the end of the next month. My husband has needed blood work done for over two years. He hasn't had it done yet. When, why you may ask, trust me, it's not because I haven't been pushing for him to go. He works construction in the Toronto region. He starts work at 7 a.m. and gets home at 6 p.m. He supports our family in four and will not take an entire morning off. Labs used to have Saturday hours, but not anymore. Apparently there's a lab in Newmarket that's open for a few hours on Saturday. If we were to go to that lab, he'd have to get up at 4.30 a.m. to be on the road by 5 a.m. and with travel, approximately 45 minutes and wait time, which I'm sure would be ridiculous as it is the only lab open on Saturdays, he'd be lucky to be back home by 10 a.m. I'm guessing there are hundreds of other breadwinners foregoing important blood work so that they can work and get a full paycheck to pay uh, for all the taxes we pay in the province of Ontario. Perhaps you could ask him, Mr. McGinty, what kind of effect this would have on health, the health care system then. Sorry for the rant, but that's my two cents as I see it. And I have many, many more, but uh, Ms. Elliott was kind enough to give me a few minutes. So I guess my order paper question, and then um, I'll wait for you to get back to me, would be uh, just to read it into the record. Would the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care explain when the Ministry was notified of the closure of medical laboratories in Tottenham, Stainer, and Elmville, and explain what steps were taken to prevent this cut to frontline patient care? And secondly, would the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care provide current wait times for each service provided at each of the medical laboratories operated by Life Labs in Alliston, Collingwood, and Wasaga Beach, and provide the wait times data for medical laboratory services provided at the Georgian Bay General Hospital in Midland? So to wind up, Minister, I'd, I'd appreciate your help, your inquiry, uh, to push these companies along. If companies, uh, for business case reasons or whatever, refuse to, uh, to, to continue the service or reinstate the service, uh, perhaps we could have some other plan of attack to uh, make sure that my constituents uh, receive uh, accessible health care uh, that they would get if they lived in larger centres. Thank you. Okay, are you looking for a question?
question and answer I right think now. on a follow-up to be, uh, Mr. Probably has a lot to say, but on the follow-up, Mr. Clark has a similar uh, okay, letter. Okay, we'll Mr. Clark, go ahead. Um, the, on the issue of, of labs, what I want to say is, um, and I, uh, Mr. Clark is here, th this is an issue that has caused me some real concern as well, and um, we are, uh, w w I think it's important to take a good look at it. We do not have wait time um, protocols for, for labs. Uh, we have got wait time standards for a lot of other things, and we're increasing the number of things we are measuring. I take your advice seriously that, uh, um, that this may ought to be something we take a good hard look at. I think it's important to know that, um, that these are private companies. These are not government services. They are in, lar in large but not completely government funded. But, uh, but we do expect good service for people and uh, when it comes to uh, 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 to accessing lab services. So I hear what, uh, what you and what Mr. Wilson have said about um, the uh, uh, unacceptably long wait times, the hours not being um, sufficient, uh, closures. I think, uh, I think you've raised some good questions. And uh, you know that I think uh, Mr. Wilson raised the issue, uh, is there enough competition within, within the lab sector? What's important to me is that people actually get the tests they need. And we know with diabetes, getting those blood tests, you know, there are three tests we're really encouraging people with diabetes to get. And if the, uh, the system isn't responding well to that, isn't, isn't facilitating that, then there's a problem. So let's, we'll take a good look at it. One thing you should know is that uh, we made a change to our funding of vitamin D testing. The vitamin D testing, which is done in labs, increased by 2,500% over the last few years. And now what we do is we will uh, fund vitamin D testing for people with, who have conditions where there's um, an evidence-based reason for them to get testing. So this will take pressure off labs. It will increase capacity for labs. But I do think uh, it is something that, uh, um, uh, that we need to take a good look at.